So guys, as you can see, I went ahead and took off all the lights and the side reflectors and everything. I didn't end up recording it because really the bolts that are on there have been on there for a very long time and took me multiple minutes per bolt to try to get off there. And a lot of them even would snap whenever you would torque down to try to loosen them. But let's look at the lights. We got all the lights laid out here. As you can see, a lot of them were actually just the OD green color before they were very badly painted the tan. Uh, so now really my next steps on this is going to be to sand everything down, uh, primer it so I can get it ready for paint. Try to make them look as good as new or better. Alright, it's been a few days since I've taken those lights off of there. So let me show you what we got now. So we took everything down, took it apart, sanded them down. Some things got a new coat of primer on them. They have all been prepped and ready to spray now. And we're gonna get to spraying this Raptor liner. Now I do have a full kit of the Raptor liner in black, which I'm gonna be using for something else. Um, I decided to get one of these aerosol kits to see how it did because I don't really have a whole lot to paint right now. I did also get an adhesion promoter to try to help with some of these plastic parts and some of the areas where it's not easy to sand and prep. So we got two coats of the adhesion promoter applied. Uh, it's a 10 minute flash between that and we need to let that dry for 20 minutes now and then we'll spray our Raptor liner. Oh, 
I don't think it'll be quite as bad whenever we get to the actual Humvee when the parts are actually bigger to paint but as you can see on the table here we do have a lot of overspray on it one thing I wanted to do since I did have so much overspray is test how durable this stuff is this is just cardboard guys it's just the overspray from whenever I was spraying the parts and I took a screw here we're just gonna scratch the surface here where there's actually this overspray and then we'll scratch an area that's not painted with the same amount of pressure and see how it does so I don't know if you can see that but there is little kind of surface scratches in there None of that really wanted to go through. It just kind of ran along the top. Now we're going to go to an area that's not covered by this and apply the same amount of pressure. So it looks like this area up here is probably going to be the closest we're going to get to not having overspray on it. But we're going to take the same screw and run it along here and see what it does. And that's just going straight through that cardboard well it is pretty durable it even makes cardboard more durable so after about an hour of drying it was safe to remove the tape and guys i gotta admit it looks pretty good let's check it out I just wanted to show you all a little bit on what I did with the lights to upgrade them. Uh, we are going to go with 12 volt system on this Humvee after I get done with it. So we're going to get rid of the 24 volts and I was a little afraid that some of the system, some of the lights on there that were 24 volt aren't going to be bright enough. So I went in and I got some of these 
They are LED, they're 12 volt rated. Uh, I got two different colors basically. I have red and I have amber. The red will go in the tail lights and the amber will go in the front turn signals. So they do just push in the same as the regular bulbs that are already in it. They just push in and twist and lock in place. So they're very simple, don't require any rewiring at all. Now I also wanted to show y'all what I did for the side marker lights as well. And of course some of y'all may be able to just use a new bulb, an LED bulb in there. But as you can see the little housing in here on mine was all corroded away. So I just decided to try to upgrade to a little LED trailer light. And so basically what I did was just take a razor and cut around this rubber piece here cut it flat that just slides out of now still the LED housing is still too small for this rubber piece so I ended up taking a washer and just pushing it into place the LED actually just threads right through there and if it doesn't fit in perfectly you can use a drill to make it a little bit larger so that it'll fit in place. So when that was in place, I took another washer on the back side. And then I took the nut that's provided with these. simply just tighten it down so when it was tight now it fits in there nice and snug of course the rubber moves around a little bit but whenever this housing is attached over the top it actually seals around along that indention there and holds it in place and basically for the wiring I ended up getting just a two pin automotive grade connector that is a waterproof connector and so I will be just wiring these in place for the positive and negatives on these lights. If y'all have any other specific questions on how I've done the lights just let me know and I can go into more detail on them. I know I didn't show a whole lot of the sanding and prep on that really it took a few days to get everything ready and i didn't want to bore y'all with that but guys if y'all like this content please like subscribe and share and as always i'll see y'all next time